welcome everyone to Expanding Your Consciousness. Uh, this is our first um, meetup for 2022. This is December 5th. And I'd like to welcome everyone and uh, also tell, uh, say Happy New Year to everyone as well. And I just want to uh, say to everyone, uh, as uh, Kenny speaks tonight, we do have a, a speaker tonight, uh, if you could please mute yourself uh, until um, Kenny is open to some questions afterwards. Uh, another thing I'd like to say to everyone, would you please keep your mind open? Even you know, in this group, I ask that you keep your mind open because sometimes uh, people introduce something and we just want to shut it out. But uh, the whole idea of uh, these videos is to um, share experiences and stories and uh, thoughts that um, really expand our sense of what we think is uh, reality, right? Things that go beyond our reality. Uh, so uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Kenny uh, Norque, who uh, is a writer and Kenny has written uh, a couple of books, actually. Uh, one is Beyond the Bull, uh, taking stock market uh, wisdom to a new level. And the other one is the Flynn, Flynn Man. And uh, these are found on his website called KennyDN.com. And you can find his essays there, his poetry there, and uh, his books as well. So uh, welcome, Kenny. You've been on our earlier videos of this uh, when we first started out. Uh, this is our uh, ninth week, our ninth uh, meetup. And I, you know, you had joined us uh, in the earlier ones. So uh, welcome back. And uh, I'm going to uh, hand it over to you now. OK, thank you. Um, I have a sort of a perverted need to mess with people's minds. Um, sometimes we get it, the habits that we think, that we use to think, um, really restrict us. So one of the things I'm hoping to, that I hope to achieve with this essay was to help people um, open up their minds, scramble their minds, make them more flexible. Um, and I try to do it by using the scientific method, because um, science. And like, do you mind if I just tell uh, viewers what that essay is? It's called The Consciousness of Water. Right? That's the essay that we're talking about tonight. OK, Ken. Yeah. I got the idea for that from, uh, from my teacher. I'm a Buddhist, and I learned I, my teacher's name is Gen Sandin. And Sandin was teaching something about Buddhism. And he said, did you know that we're about 70% water? And he went from there and he used it to illustrate his point. And I thought, hmm, the modern scientists, people who study the brain, think they're studying consciousness. So I thought, oh, well, there's a little flaw in that. The, the brain is a body part. And if it's a body part, that means it's probably around 70% water. So that means water must be conscious because we're conscious. So what is it if that somebody thinks consciousness is a function of your brain, then it's not too big of a stretch to think that that consciousness has something to do with the water. That makes up the brain, 70% of it anyway. More or less. I mean, I'm just using a round figure, but whatever that fixed figure is, it's 70% for the whole body. Whatever it is for the brain, that must be, there's a pretty good chance that that's conscious. So I wrote this essay <laughs> with that in mind. And uh, if you just follow the essay, you'll see that there's pretty, it's pretty logical. I tried to make it as tight as I could. And if that's true, then there's all kinds of ways of looking at the world that emerge at the end of the essay. 
And one of them is that the planet Earth is conscious. There are some people who think um, all of us are brain cells in the Earth. Okay, so I make a, a point in this essay that we might be body parts of the Earth. Whoa. Maybe it's brain cells, maybe it's muscle cells, maybe we all like to think brain cells because the brain gives has so much prestige in our modern society. But maybe we're some other body part, <laughs> something a little less prestigious. Sometimes when we're angry, we call each other one of those. <laughs> maybe that's what we really are. <laughs> so I hope by now you've had a chance to read it. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm ready to take questions on it and talk about it because it will allow your, your, your mind to think in a different pattern than, it, than it's used to thinking. And if you like fighting, if you like arguing and everything, this would be a great one for you. Next time you encounter somebody who thinks they know what the brain, everything comes from the brain, you know, love. People think love is a function of the brain? Come on, what kind of notion of love do people have who, who think it can be a mechanism of the brain to do with endorphins and dopamine and things like that? I mean, give me a break. So, so if you like fighting, you can have a lot of fun uh, introducing this one to, to people and playing with them. Just please remember to play because if you take it seriously, it isn't going to work. <laughs> Yeah. Just want to add a little rye to that water. <laughs> well, but what you're saying is because we are 70% water, um, that water is flowing all the time. It's changing. Yeah. So we are changing. Yes. Our atoms, our molecules are changing all the time. Yes. And, and would that be the same with the earth itself, with the water that's in the earth like uh, all that water beer is has been there since the creation of the earth probably i don't i i i don't know about the the earth because i think it's possible that the earth has some percentage of water too and I, i'm imagining it might be much lower than that of a human being or a horse or a grasshopper or a oak tree or what all these things that are made of water but i don't know about the earth itself whether it's fixed or changing mm -hmm. for us for sure it's changing the same the faces that we're looking at now are not the same faces that were there nine weeks ago when we started they look the same yeah. and our minds think they're the same yeah. not the same 70% of that, whatever that is, it's gone. It's been flushed down some toilet and replaced by whatever you had for whatever you've been drinking. Yeah. Are, are we going to hear the essay tonight or were we supposed to have read it? You're supposed to have read it, but I can read it if you like. I love it because it's, it's yeah. so much fun. <laughs> but it, yeah. is a, it is a little bit long. So, um, I, I'm for uh, hearing the essay. I don't know. Should we take a? Has everyone I'm, read it, or am I the only one? I read no, it. I read it weeks ago, but uh, you know. Uh, so. It, whatever the boss says, Brent? I'll do. But if you, Brent? Um, I was just thinking that maybe the the main points in what you're trying. Yeah, to I think say so. Yeah, would be better. The main... We'll get lost. We'll get lost. You'll you'll say something at the beginning, and by the time you're done, we'll we'll have forgotten it. So for sure, for it's sure, better That's just kind of, the, the main point. Forget how many words it is, but it is a, a little bit of a. It might be like twenty minute a twenty minute read. Okay. So what I I make the point that your the water content of your body, the faces that we're looking at right now on the screen. That we're experiencing that is constantly changing 
what the so we drink and we urinate and our body is like a river so when we look at a river we it looks the same the next day but all of that water is gone downstream and new water is there so that's the same as your body so if your consciousness rises from your body like the some of these researchers are saying something's wrong <laughs> because 70 percent of your body's in constant change so that means you're probably forget going to forget a lot more than we forget because if water is associated with consciousness so obviously water can't be can it so then I go into the various forms that water takes. And one of the forms is you, your body. Another is a stream. Another is the ocean. Another is your mother-in-law. The bird, the crows that are looking for food all around us. The insects that when we spray the crops, we try to kill all those insects. All that, it's all different forms of water. So then I try to make the point that, well, maybe what we are is parts of the earth because our body is made of the earth. Water's obviously a body part. I mean, the, the earth is covered in water, so no problem figuring that one out. And the calcium and hydrocarbons and things that make up the other 30% of our body, it also changes a much, it's a slower change than the water. Yeah. But it is the same process. Our cells have limited lifespans. They are born and they die constantly. And when you were two days old, just a little infant, you know, six pounds, seven ounces or whatever you were, look at you now. <laughs> Ooh, quite a difference. Where'd all that come from? Well, that's earth. That's the earth. You ate it and it transformed into the other 30%. Hmm. So we make a case that the body is in fact, a, a, the human body is part of the earth in the same way that your finger is part of your human body or that any cell is part of your human body. So if you come to a conclusion like that, then when we look at a city with all those people in it, we could say, well, they're mostly water. They're made of water. These are different forms of water. So when we do that, it, uh, we, we can then see the planet Earth differently than we perceive it now and that's the whole point we are egocentric beings the whole universe is revolves around us in our consciousness we think we exist and everything else is perceived by us but if we work with these concepts that we're all literally made of the planet Earth. And maybe you could just as easily describe us as parts of the planet Earth. I mean, it's not hard to say a cliff or a road or a field, they're parts of the planet Earth, but me, oh, I'm special. <laughs> well, at the end of it all, there's this old saying, Earth to Earth, ashes to ashes dust to dust so that's the punchline of my whole essay if they added water to water it would be even better because that's literally what we are we're not that special if we could just develop the consciousness to see that we're really part of the planet, literally part of the planet. And we don't see ourselves that way. We see ourselves as something special. We have special needs. We kill other animals 
eat other vegetables. We do all kinds of things to look after number one here. Is that valid? No, that's life. <laughs> but if we uh, expand our understanding of us as part of consciousness, the greater consciousness and the earth and that, that expansion does uh, impact the earth as well, right? Or would you say the, uh, the consciousness of the earth impacts us? Like to me, it seems like they're linked. Yeah, that's my question for you is, is there a difference between the consciousness of the earth and your consciousness and the consciousness of the six of us who are sitting here? Is there a difference? And we perceive that there is because we're perceiving our little corner of it. But if we just stop and think, my little corner of the world that I call my body is constantly changing and interchanging atoms and molecules with our mother, the earth. Are we really different? Are we just in, are we separate or are we still in her womb? Any comments, any questions? So I'm wondering ultimately what you're, why you're doing what you're doing and what your, your point really is. And I think I, I think I'm gathering what it is. It's like you're, you're trying to wake people up uh, to look at things they take for granted so simply like the earth. Most people don't think much about it at all. And so you're trying to wake them up so that they'll start thinking more about the, the problem with pollution, the problem that, that we're causing. Um, are, is that kind of where you're coming from, that you've got some ultimate uh, purpose underneath and, and the water and the earth is, a, is sort of a way to get people to start waking up to more important things? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I suspected. Um, I'm not following uh, you uh, completely here, though, because, uh, you know, I, 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 I don't really personally understand what difference it makes, whether water is consciousness or not, or the earth is conscious or not, In, ultimately. I don't know if it really matters, but it, even if it does, it's a different kind of thing than 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 life forms because because uh, the earth and, and water can't reproduce themselves and they uh, they don't take in waste products and exit uh, you know, I mean they don't take in nutrients and give off waste products they don't have self mobility there are certain aspects of life that don't apply to them uh, that do apply to us so I I. And when when I say us, I don't even know what I am. I'm I'm just I'm just knowing that there's consciousness, and that everything shows up within it, including who I think I am, and including the earth and everything else. It all just shows up in consciousness. So I kind of think consciousness is in a different uh, dimension than the four dimensional space time world, and that's why scientists can't find it anywhere. <laughs> they're they're looking at correlations, and they're not finding the essence of what it is. But I, but ultimately, I mean, I, I applaud you for what you're doing because you're, you're at least you're, tr you're do trying to do something to, to help what's going on on this planet, which it, de it definitely needs. So if there's some people that can start to think or see that water is conscious and earth is consciousness, and that helps the whole situation of life on earth, then more power to you. Although I'm, I'm, I've got a science background and also a spiritual seeker background i've kind of got a foot in both sides so i and i i don't think you're going to win over any scientists or lo logicians here with with your arguments uh if you're trying to get through to them i don't i don't i don't think your essay is going to help but um you know the rest of us uh, are, are probably going to relate in some way and maybe it'll be helpful what about uh the work of dr emoto though where uh he shows the impact that uh, our words have on water, right? He looked at it as something that has a certain intelligence. Uh, has anyone followed his work? I've had a look at that as well. It's pretty interesting results. So 
Yeah. Uh, he's shown how the molecules of water uh, react to uh, different intentions. Pretty amazing. Uh, the difference in, I think he, he freezes them so he get ice crystals of, of the molecules, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that, yeah, that uh, shows uh, some interesting relationship with uh, our consciousness, our, our, our energy, and how, it, how water reacts to it. That's uh, interesting. I'm not sure how, what uh, conclusions that it, it draws. Uh, um, but there's, I, some, there's some relationship there. I, I want to go uh, to a part in your essay, Kenny, where you say, you know, a river, you know, it's um, uh, more, uh, is alive, right? a living thing. We, we think certain things are living things and other things are non-living things. Um, but river is one. And then you put in brackets uh, or parentheses, um, uh, but it's a video uh, gamer. Uh, alive or something like that. I just wanted to ask you about that because I, I thought it was interesting you put that in there. That was just my, I want to make sure people don't take me seriously <laughs> because yeah. um, a video gamer is like part of a machine. So what happens in video games in the little bit that I've experienced is the, the we've got these beautiful computer things and they are designed or programmed in a way that they get, they make us human beings into mecha mechanical. So we think mechanically. Yeah. So I thought, okay, well, I'll just mock that. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know, just have a little fun with it. But it's, you know, that's the real question in all this is are, what's the difference between mind and matter and matter almost through pretty much every science I know, wants to reduce it to mechanics, mechanical things. It obeys Newton's laws and all that. For every act, you know, all that Newton stuff. That's uh, mechanical. But there is an element in our consciousness that is non-mechanical. And that's what they're missing. So I'm saying, well, if it is mechanical, then what about this and what about, and all these what abouts that I've got? You know, we, we we can picture somebody with an electroencephalogram mounted on their head, and then, in fact, I've been a participant in these experiments where they pl plug you into some big computer, and then you, you're paying attention visually and auditory, and you know, and you're really into it, and you're part of the machine. They're, they're, they're measuring the mechanics of what they call consciousness and, and, and it relates to brain and activity and all that. So that's all fine. And if you're a brain surgeon trying to help somebody who's got a stroke or had a head injury or something, go for it, baby, fix it, yeah, yeah. Help, them, help them. But if you're actually trying to live a human life, you need a little more than the mechanics. And so that's where I'm taking them. So that was my motivation to try to help people understand that there's the mechanical part that can be described by mathematics and everything is only part, that there's a huge part that has to do with intention, for example. Well, what's intention in the mechanical realm? <laughs> it isn't, doesn't exist. You know, I remember in high school when we, when we were studying Newtonian physics, and we, taught, I I always visualize a pool table and me playing pool, or a, a artillery piece and we pull the cord and the artillery shell goes off and all these mechanical things and I loved all that, but then I fell in love. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's no trigger getting pulled in a explosion well maybe there was now that i think of it because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i guess if love was part of our the physiology of the brain they'd yeah. be able to find it and and remove it or fix it whatever <laughs> <laughs> just let it be it'll fall off eventually <laughs>
Uh, yeah, and, uh, <laughs> that's. Uh, I'm just reading a, a in a, in two part encyclopedia. And PD, uh, encyclopedia, it's called uh, The Way of the Psychonaut by uh, Stanislav Grof and, uh, uh, and how, you know, it is a study of consciousness and it's like 60 years of his life has been the exploration of, of the psyche and consciousness. And uh, the very, I've just gotten into the very first part of it and that is, you know, that's the argument that it was the, the scientists in examining the brain really thought they could find every you know consciousness all of these things about our experience in the brain and be able to probe it and measure it um, but there's some things that just uh, they just can't it's not in the it's not in the mechanics of the brain it, it there are you know a lot of there's a lot of evidence that it is outside of the brain so I can't go, I, I wish I, I had a lot more to add to that, but uh, perhaps in the, after I read a lot more and absorb it, I'll be able to add more to that. But it is a fascinating study. Well, Brent commented on it earlier uh, and it quite eloquently, I thought it was, it was quite lovely. The uh, Buddhists have an interesting angle that I'm exploring, and that is that matter they call it form, and my teacher calls it form, is created by mind, not mind is created by matter. It's the exact opposite of what they're thinking. So I'm exploring that in some detail, and it's interesting. I'm on a, and I'm on a retreat right now, and the lecturer today and yesterday was an expert on this exact topic. So, I'm, I have I had my mind blown <laughs> today and yesterday with new insight on this exact same topic, and I become more and more convinced. But I'm not. Uh, it's so so it's so subtle that the scientists who are used to studying gross mechanics they 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 can't even they need to meditate for a long time to get the mind flexible enough that they can start to think in in different ways. We're a long, long way from scientists being able to think outside the box. Or they some have. scientists, right? There are some that are exploring this and, and trying different things. Yeah, there are some. And in yeah. fact, if you look at the discoveries in quantum physics, yeah. they're, they're right on it, but they don't know how to think about it. You see, that's the trouble. They, uh, the, the, the mechanics, the Newtonian physics are all mechanical laws. And as long as you think those mechanical laws are, are the only way to describe reality, you, you're, you're stuck. So maybe I can jiggle the box a little by talking about water and us being mere parts of the earth. We all think we're, this, we're the top of the food chain. <laughs> I want to go back, though, as you were saying, with the water replaced in us, and that changes us. Um, with rivers and streams and, uh, you know, the changing of water on the earth, I guess, changes the earth itself, too, right? You refer to it like the blood of the earth. Yeah. So. Yeah, if you think about water in detail, it is alive. I mean, I, there, are de uh, there are definitions that we can use, um, but the, just look at nature. Just watch the snowstorms coming in and the, the, uh, the, the, the snow lands on the mountain and it f in the spring it f flows down the side and out comes streams and fish go up it and all this. Wow, that's spectacular. But let's reduce it to mechanics and we'll all study it. And... <laughs> well, okay, so um, expanding consciousness is about sharing stories. So I will tell you some things that I've done in relation to water because to me, I consider it an intelligent um, uh, or these particles that make up water as being intelligent right, mm. in some way. So when I was in uh, Cairo, Egypt, working there, uh, 
I was studying more about energy. I, I read the book, The Field by Lynn McTaggart, and I was reading other books on energy and learning about Reiki and that. And I was uh, taking little um, bottles of water, uh, putting energy into it or healing it, right? And uh, speaking into it. So saying things like, you know, may there be peace in the world. Um, you know, um, may uh, mankind wake up, right? And these types of messages. And I would go to the Nile River and pour the water particles into the Nile. And I do the same thing here. Dave knows that. I do it, you know, uh, when we go to the Pacific Ocean or when we go to um, the Fraser River. I, I take bottles of water, I Reiki them, and I speak into them, uh, you know, messages and that. And I learned a lot of that too, by, um, you know, looking at the work of Dr. Emoto, who said that our words have great impact on water particles, our intentions have great impact on it as well. And uh, he would put words on, you know, a, a bottle of water, you know, so if you put love on it, and he'd um, take a particle of the water out of the bottle and freeze it and looked at it, it'd be a beautiful formation, right? The crystals. And then um, he'd uh, have another uh, bottle with hate on it. And he'd take that particle and put it in, freeze it, and it would look uh, distorted, right? It would look dark and brown, that sort of thing. Uh, so I can actually show you some of his images if you're interested in looking at them. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'd like, uh, to, ask a, I'd like to ask you a question first, though, or yeah. make a suggestion uh, regarding your Reiki and water. Yes. Um, I'm going to suggest that the next time you, or do you, so Reikis are generally healers. Yes. So you you, you do healing then. Yes. Okay, so my suggestion is that you do exactly the same thing you're doing with the little bottles of water, except you give the, one of those to the patient and ask them to drink it. Yes, that we do that though. When we uh, are doing Reiki, we do that with the patient too. But when I want to like <laughs> really um, uh, share uh, good intentions in the broader scale, then I, I, I do it, you know, I, I go to like the river or to the ocean and I have little bottles of water. Cause to me, they're like intelligent little beings, you know? And uh, yeah, that's why I do it. It really, I can attest to it, it really works. I mean, look at how good I look. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm 90. Oh, I was wondering what, I was wondering how that worked. No, you're not. <laughs> anyway, let's see if I can share. <laughs> well, if you're going to get people water, Diane, uh, yes. don't give them water from the Nile. <laughs> no, no. Well, I mean, I, I <clears throat> water from the tap no, no, no. there. I mean, that's the best. I herb the bottled water that they had there. Uh, but, yeah. That's interesting. A part of the Egyptian uh, mythology or their, uh, you know, their religious, the ancient uh, Egyptian religious belief when you pass over and your your heart is being weighed against a feather uh part of the questions are did you pollute the nile did, were you good to did were you good to the nile is if you don't pass that test sorry you're ejected oh. <laughs> so they say the water is very sacred of course by the way if anybody's interested in this idea we were talking about earlier about uh, everything is mind where everything comes out of mind. There's a book called The Grand Delusion. Uh, and that book is incredible because this guy uh, takes everything and looks at it through the idea that it's mind. And he gets rid of a lot of fallacies uh, in science, uh, fallacies in philosophy. Let's look at the work of Dr. Masaru Emoto in this short video. Water. I hope to show people 
through my research that water has a memory of its own. Dr. Emoto's laboratory does research on water samples, which are subjected to various forms of outside influence. The impressions made upon the water are recorded by swiftly freezing it in a cryogenic chamber. This is what water heated in a microwave oven looks like. This is the effect of a mobile telephone. Somebody said thank you to this water. Excuse me. You disgust me. In all of the world's religions, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, it is the practice to recite a prayer before taking food or to consecrate the food during major religious holidays. How often do we stop and think, what for? And how did the certainty arise in such dissimilar religions that this is the right thing to do? Why did something that science is only now trying to understand seem obvious to our ancestors? It turns out that the frequency of vibrations in the prayers of any religion uttered in any language is 8 Hertz, which corresponds to the frequency of the oscillations of the Earth's magnetic field. Therefore, a prayer, pronounced with love, creates a harmonic structure in water, which is an ingredient of absolutely all food. In 1995, Dr. Masato Imoto was the first one to record musical impressions on water. In Dr. Emoto's laboratory, they presented water with different types of music, after which they froze the water and then under the microscope could clearly see the crystals that the water had formed. Here is what the music of Bach looks like. Mozart. Beethoven. <laughs> Heavy rock. Dr. Masato Imoto, world-renowned water researcher, messenger of peace, and author of many books, including the New York Times bestsellers, Hidden Messages in Water, The True Power of Water, and most recently, The Shape of Love. Imoto's research has visually captured the structure of water at the moment of freezing, and through photographic documentation, have shown the direct effect of words, music, and thought on water. Destructive thoughts, compared to those of love, gratitude, and peace, show significant differences. This revelation that our thoughts can influence water has a profound impact on our health and the well-being of the planet. Here is his message. Uh, water is a uh, uh, principle of everything. And also, water is a mirror of yourself. That means, if you have a, a peaceful mind, uh, water becomes a peaceful mind. And also, uh, world becomes um, peace, peaceful. You know? Because water is a principle of everything. So each if each person has a peaceful mind, automatically uh, this uh, universe becomes um, peace. I believe so. So let's talk uh, with uh, water and uh, let's uh, ask water and uh, let's uh, say uh, thank you water and uh, uh, love you water and respect you water. Okay.
any uh, anything any thoughts Kenny I'm cautious about concluding too much so okay I'd like to I like to observe <laughs> and then not think <laughs> observe <laughs> Um, um, it, uh, one of the things that we were discussing was the, you know, the nature of the, of the planet as a living organism and, mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, Brent's uh, point that we're these living entities very much different than, than the earth and our ability for mobility and, and reproduction, <coughs> uh, taking in elements and processing elimination on some levels that does happen on the earth as we look at it as a whole you know there is you know creation there is uh definitely taking in dealing with pollutants and like you know from one example are wetlands how they take brackish polluted water and through natural processes create purified water you know just uh a few of the things. And uh, if you look at the earth as a whole, again, uh, we're set, let's say 70 plus percent water as is the earth, you know, that was about the percentage of water to earth on a guess on, you know, on a, on a level. Actually, if you took all the water off of the planet's surface, it would all be earth, but, you know. Anyway, there are some, you know, interesting facets to that we all are i mean on a conscious level an expanded level of consciousness we are all um, part of everything so we're 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 in relation to these to all of to everything so uh, as you i think if you are feeling or, or realizing that you are a, a lot more respectful or you know you're not going to you're going to see it as part of yourself so you're going to have a different relationship with it than if you're purely egocentric yeah ultimately everything's one ultimately and the, the faster and quicker we can get into that then the distinguishing parts and whether this is alive or this isn't doesn't really matter that much because there's just this one thing happening and yeah the ego which keeps us in separation so if we can see past that mm -hmm. uh, then we we would get into this really high one space wouldn't we and we'd all be one in it and uh, we would probably not divide the world into good and bad anymore uh, things might look bad or look ugly but that's coming from a particular perspective and I like the analogy in Genesis that talks about that, where God says to uh, Adam and Eve, don't eat from that tree. Uh, and most people think that tree is the tree of good and evil. It's not. It's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you divide things up into good and evil, then you'll take yourself right out of the kingdom of heaven, which is what happened to them. So uh, that's a good thing to keep in mind. And, and a lot of times... You know, if something looks ugly or something doesn't feel right, it, it needs your attention because chances are there's an identity involved in that. You know, like I had some problems with my landlord not being a landlord and I used to, I, I, it just drove me nuts uh, emotionally until I realized the reason that was happening was because, because I was identified with this image of who I am, which is Brent. And I was saying, well, Brent's this guy who's who's not who's not that kind of a person. He doesn't deserve to be treated this way. He deserves to be treated great and loving, and that's who that guy is, you know. So my consciousness was was like wrapped up and tied up in this identity of Brent and how he's supposed to be all the time, which isn't the case in in life. And once I could see the difference between my awareness and the image of my egoic identity of Brent, then that helped me tremendously to to not be that concerned about how somebody was treating me or, or whether they were doing it the right way or not so in the end yeah it's all one yeah uh, lakshay lakshay would you like to comment um 
well i'm just listening to you guys and wow you guys have such beautiful insights it's just blowing my mind <laughs> well um, one thing about the study that um, dan was showing um how the molecules of water react to uh, different music in different songs um it's just a thought that i have well i feel that like when when they said that there was some sort of a metal song the the water was showing sort of an ugly pattern well i don't know if it's ugly maybe maybe it's just that it's sort of random it's just not forming a pattern and that's the case when i'm listening to metal songs my thoughts are not in a pattern they're just erratic they're just all around yeah. that could have been the point i guess i don't know <laughs> hmm. okay that's that's my take any other uh comments uh not by me for now i guess okay kelly um yeah uh i've noticed uh like um i've put water next to a singing bowl like you know the sound of a singing bowl and I leave it there for a little while to kind of charge it because you can charge your water with frequencies different frequencies and when I drink it it actually tastes better and I mean my tap water is like not <laughs> it's not very good I'm actually looking for a device to put on my tap because I, I think that the water here is just awful and I don't I don't really you know, uh, believe in the gimmicks of smart water, and this water, that water, it's water. But I also do understand that our water is, uh, has been kind of uh, killed and, uh, you know, chemically uh, changed, <laughs> altered. So I I am looking for ways to uh, change that so that it's more it's it's more pleasant when you drink it. Yeah, uh, 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 water purification systems are something I I dealt with a lot of, and uh, something that would work really well for you, Kelly, especially in Hamilton, yeah. is a, a reverse osmosis water treatment system with. Uh, definitely polished with activated charcoal and um, ah. there's a lot of uh, chlorine in the water of most municipal waters and certainly um, I mean there's fluoride and there's uh, so yes. much that your water's being drawn from Lake Ontario which is you know <laughs> so polluted with in industries, um, farming yeah. industries, air pollution, you name it. So yeah. um, it uh, that device and, and there, the prices come down in them uh, on them considerably. Okay. When I was in the business, they were around fifteen hundred dollars for something good, and another, and now they're around three hundred dollars, and they do perfectly good job. Uh, they really reduce reduce that. I mean, and then you take that and and uh let it sit in sunshine and then ring it you know charge it with your singing bowl and reiki or you know, <laughs> pretty good yeah you guys yeah. not have bottled water up there we do oh, we, we do uh, diane and i uh we get ours from a water plant you know they do uh they do all of the above that i just mentioned plus they uh they put a they run it through a, a filter of um uh, calcium and magnesium, I believe, just to give it an alkalinity, like true alkalinity, and that uh, that helps. Yeah, there's a place. There's a place here called uh, Soul Water, and That's, they sell yeah. they yeah. sell uh, reverse osmosis. Yeah, so they, yeah. I was uh, thinking on maybe stopping by there. They're and, great uh, people. They're really good people, and they will deliver. Right, so. Oh. Yeah, and you could get a dispenser, and they, I actually know them quite well. They're really excellent people. Do you? Yeah. Okay, okay, so they are good. Okay. Cal? 
I just want yes. to go back to what we were talking about because if um, everything's a frequency, I'm going back to what what uh, Shia said, and also Brent, you're kind of touching on this, this whole thing, well, you know, uh, bad or good, but sound, there can be sound pollution. There can, you know, there's pollution of the water through things that we put in it. So all of that, I would think, would impact our health in some way. I, I'm just putting that out there for you too. If you want to comment. Yeah, it isn't that there's no bad stuff. I'm I'm just saying you got to be careful the way you judge things. But of course, you know, you're not going to put poison in your body. You know, that's not going to help you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you just feel better. Like, I just find I feel better if I'm listening to certain music compared to, you know, other music. And, and again, that gets into our experience. We're all different. Uh, we've probably had uh, or we've all had different lives, you know, past lives, that sort of thing. So we bring those experiences uh, in this life. And that, uh, you know, when we hear certain sounds, uh, they can have an impact on us. But uh, like Shia, I, I, you know, some music, you know, like Dave, you like uh, music that I would never listen to in a million years. <laughs> That's why he's out in the music room um, in the garage. But, uh, you know, but you find it uplifting, right? You find a certain joy by listening to that music. Yeah, yeah, you got it. So it's actually, you, some of it you have to be a bit careful with. Uh, I found uh, uh, get a little too excited. Some, you know, like <laughs> kind of, if, you, if you're practicing mindfulness, you're wondering what is like, um, what, why is this so stimulating? What's being stimulated? Um, should I be getting so excited? <laughs> you know, it's to, you know, enjoy it. Yes, right? Uh, and But don't get uh, attached to it, you know, because, uh, yeah. and, and, but, you know, enjoy it, let it go. But, you know, uh, don't, uh, don't get too serious. Don't, don't get too hung up on it. But, and again, we've talked about this, uh, um, you know, there's, uh, you know, uh, we've had some of the same teachers, Kenny, uh, Sandin and Gendelic, probably you've come in contact with her. Um, you know, there's three, you know, there's the experiences are good, neutral, or, you know, not so good. And it's, um, uh, it, um, it's your reaction to it that gets you caught up and and forming attachment to it right it says don't get too attached don't get too hung up on the, on the good or the bad you know just uh, it's gonna happen let it go enjoy it let it go you know like shaya yeah i totally agree with uh, what dave said it's it's more about the attachment i guess and yeah, people people do enjoy metal music, and not to say that I don't enjoy it. I really enjoy it sometimes. It's it's so aggressive, and it just uplifts my mood sometimes. But but then again, it's not. It's a different kind of uplifting. It's mm -hmm. uh, I don't have patterns in my thoughts. I'm just you know all out there, like I mentioned before. Yeah. But yeah, when I'm listening to music like symphony or something, when I'm playing violin, I mean, I feel different different yeah so what you're saying it generates different emotions yeah 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 okay i want to go back to uh your article or your essay kenny mm -hmm. and uh, another thing and i think this is what you're kind of saying uh maybe this consciousness flow of water is similar to human consciousness our consciousness moves and changes in our mind is this movement of water in the atmosphere and on the surface of the earth, um, is this how the earth thinks, right? Mm -hmm. Did you want to comment on that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> One of the concepts is, so in physics, we've got to abandon physics. 
But unfortunately for me, people really understand physics. So I have to use physics to explain something non-physical. So here goes. So Newton's first law is the law of inertia. So we got a block of ice sitting on a, oh, let's go to a curling rink. We're gonna show those great big stones. We're gonna curl them down and slide them along the ice. And they're gonna clunk into another one. And so there's stillness and there's motion. So when something's sitting still, if your consciousness sits still, then that's like the mind of deep sleep. It appears as to us as blank, but that is your mind and it's still at that time. So it appears blank. When it moves a little bit, it could appear as uh, dreams. Then when it moves a little bit differently or a little bit more or less or whatever, here we are, we're awake. So we have different, the concept I wanna talk about is that I was talking about with that water thing Mm -hmm. is stillness versus movement. So the water constantly moves on the surface of the earth in the same way that there's movement in your mind, except when you're in deep sleep. Now there's still movement in your body when you're in deep sleep, your heart's still beating, your lungs are still breathing, your kidneys are still kidding, your mm -hmm. liver's still living. Uh, those are my two favorite inside jokes. <laughs> so, so it's literally that, inside. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what that was all about. That that. So I was trying to compare the human mind to water on the surface of the earth, and uh, gravity, and you know how it, it mixes up, and the moon changes the gravitational field, and that causes this sloshing around, all that stuff. Yeah. Is that the earth sinking? I guess so. So I, but again, my purpose isn't to prove anything or to like yeah. Dr. Emoto, he wanted to prove something. He was illustrating some yeah. something and he yeah. wrote a book about it and it's quite That's well. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to mess with your mind. Yeah. yeah. And then you sort it out. So that idea that movement of water is a lot like the movement of your mind that's important but how i don't know i haven't figured it out yet but i have figured out stillness so stillness of mind is that deep sleep which appears like a blank or if you give your if you have ever had surgery and they, you know, they stick the thing in your arm and you count backwards from, oh, yeah. from 10 yeah. down to blank. There's yeah, a, exactly, yeah. That's exactly. Yeah. So that's also your, your mind in stillness, your consciousness in stillness. I don't know, you're yeah. like, this is important to get all these definitions right because what's the difference between mind and consciousness and the movement and, you know, and the, the, it, it's, it's important if we're going to have a serious discussion that we have all our definitions. Yeah. No serious tonight. Yeah. So that's why, and I wrote consciousness of water to have fun with. And if it's not fun for you, wake up, baby. Get shake yourself. Just go, wow. Mm, this is supposed to be fun. It's not fun. <laughs> Maybe you bought to put a little tequila in your water. <laughs> yeah, Dave would like that. <laughs> It'll be a little more fun that way. <laughs> don't, don't put water in my tequila. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I always find that essential oils are really good in water. I want to go back though with um, the earth and uh, water as consciousness and it as a living thing, right? <clears throat> when there is a tsunami, when there is a, um, a hurricane, uh, you know, these are these expressions of the earth. They might seem like it to us because we have an opinion 
we would like to not be caught in a tsunami or a ripping Ooh. snowstorm or anything. So we have our little position on the earth. We, we're very subjective about it. But the earth, I don't think, has quite that level of uh, subjectivity that, that we're so important. So what's not important to the earth might be very important to us. And, what, and it could be the other way around, too. What we don't care about, the earth might, it might be crucial to the earth. I don't know. I think groundwater is a fascinating topic. Um, I think oil, crude oil buried in the earth, that's a fascinating topic. Are we just mosquitoes sucking her dry? I sure hope not. Or worse. Mm, yeah. As we destroy everything <laughs> in our paths. Yeah. yeah, I think in the movie The Matrix, they had a very interesting line that uh, Agent Smith gave to the, the, one of the heroes. You are a virus and we are the cure. <laughs> I really like that one. <laughs> wow. so the Agent, Agent Smith says that? Okay. Yeah, Agent Smith said it to uh, uh, Neil. Yeah, it wasn't to Neo. Oh. It was to the captain um, okay. of the ship there. That I for, I forget his name. Yeah. Ooh, it almost came to me there. <laughs> so I wonder what the Earth's memory is, because where does memory come from? So scientists tell us that it's neural pathways. And we got, I'm sorry, that's, that's not memory. I don't know what memory is, but it's, uh, is it mechanical like that? So I'm, I have to write another essay. I don't know what it's going to, maybe it's when, oh my God, maybe it's when the water freezes and stays the same. Then when it melts, that melting is remembering. I don't know. <laughs> That's actually interesting. People can't remember. I'm sorry. Actually. Okay. I was, I was just going to say it's it's interesting because um, the other day I was watching a video by Sadhguru, if you have heard his name. Oh, yeah. He's, a, he's really into yogic sciences and he claims that, that the, the water has memory and intelligence. So how the water is coming through your tap it's remembering that if, if it's coming through 60 bends then that water is going to be poison in your body so, so like stuff like that stuff like that yeah hmm. well um when dave comes back i know he um he would talk about how some native cultures believe that water has memory mm -hmm. and uh in fact that's why they i think do a ritual over water before they bathe in it or anything like that because it has memory yeah like so. back in india the, there's a river called ganga and it's considered to be really sacred it's like if you go there and take a bath in that river you'll feel really good something of that sort Yeah, the mind has a power, doesn't it, to, um, like, sometimes it's confusing is, is, you know, is, is bathing in that, that water doing, doing something to me? Or is the belief that it will, uh, sort of like the placebo effect, mm -hmm. which is, which is very uh, unbelievably accurate. I mean, like 70% of the time you can fool, yeah. you, you know, I, I believe so, that, especially yeah. this one case I'm thinking of. They gave some college students speed and uh, uh, they told them it was downers and then they gave some people downers and told them it was speed and all of them came back swearing like 70 or 80 percent of them came back swearing that what they got was what they were told rather than what they actually got yeah so there's the power of of thinking and the yeah power exactly of the mind. Yeah. so that's always that's always going on there too yeah you know yeah um dave 
I think you were mentioning one time there are natives that said that water had memory. Yeah, that's right. Um, so they uh, was uh, involved with some uh, rituals and uh, uh, he mentioned that's why they would cleanse, they would smudge after having a shower because they didn't want the memories in, in that water to have uh, the negative effect on their on, mm -hmm. on them. So they, yeah, after having a shower or bath. And, uh, yeah. Maybe a bit different if I, I didn't get a chance to talk to them about it, but uh, I wonder if it was the same if they were in a lake or, uh, or a river. But certainly, you know, the water coming through pipes and being, you know, chlorinated and things, uh, maybe, I'm not sure that's exactly how, how far that went, but uh, interesting, interesting. And one, uh, one little side note about uh, that it came to mind was, um, uh, so part of my, uh, you know, uh, career in water treatment and uh, was doing water softening. And uh, it was very interesting that they uh, would, instead of having this device that filtered your water and, and changed the molecules, you know, exchanged uh, minerals for um, sodium, uh, they uh, actually would attach a magnet to your main water pipe. And it aligned the water molecules in a certain way that it had the same effect. The um, calcium and magnesium, which was the, the problem elements of the water that ruined your taps and <clears throat> things, uh, that uh, would not precipitate out. It, wasn't, it wouldn't become a problem. So just putting a, a magnet large enough onto the onto the pipe changed the, the structure and they it was described as they instead of being random they would all align you know the water molecule has the positive and negative ends to it they would all align the same way and that changed the changed the the uh, characteristic of the water and it wasn't problem problem water did that help them get rid of the calcium and the other element you mentioned? Yeah, it, it didn't get rid of it. It just, uh, the problem with the calcium and magnesium was that it would interfere with, especially when it comes to cleaning, like using mm -hmm. soap in your laundry, it would bind it, you know, and it would basically make your soap inert and it wouldn't be effective. So you'd have to use a lot more soap and then you would get this real milky residue you know, your clothes wouldn't look clean. They wouldn't rinse properly. There would be spots on your glasses and your windows. Hard water, yeah. Hard water. This was precipitating out. And when it ran through a, a, a magnet, there was no problem. You, you, wouldn't, mm -hmm. have, you wouldn't have those uh, issues. Pretty uh, interesting. And, I, wonder, yeah, yeah. I wonder what happened there. I, I, actually, I wonder what, how that magnetic field did that you know what what i'd be interested in reading about that just to find out what exactly happened to the, yeah. the calcium and the magnesium to yeah. make it ineffective because yeah. then you don't have to worry about calcium and magnesium anymore theoretically and then you why yeah. would you buy calcium and magnesium pulled out of water just put a magnet i mean i i don't know it just it sounds yeah. crazy but if it's true it, i'd like to know how it works yeah that i i just uh remembered that it aligned the, the, the water molecules, uh, you know, so that all of the, you know, positives were at, you know, they would just line up. That's, that's the theory. I, I didn't actually get to uh, um, see it very often that people just, you know, because it, it should have taken over the industry. It should have just, everybody should have just been able to add a magnet to their, uh, but I think, um, and that would have been the end of their water treatment problem. So mm -hmm. people who own a water treatment company, you know, wouldn't want that. They didn't want, no. they wouldn't want you to just buy a, you know, a cheap magnet, and not have any problems. So but the magnet sellers would want it. So they'd be out there. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. You know, but it, 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 uh, it would be, you know, like a one-time deal. So you wouldn't. I mean, part of uh, certainly part of the industry was able to, you know, service the equipment, sell salt, other things, whatever, you know.
equipment breaks down, magnets don't. So they, they, they put themselves out of business, I guess. So it didn't really catch on, but it was definitely, uh, it was known that that was uh, something that had happened. It would be interesting to look more into though. Uh, Kenny, I do want to go back uh, to, because I, I thought your essay was excellent uh, to get us really thinking even about water because it's so important to us, right? And um, uh, because when I look at how we use water, all of us, it's, um, we use it almost in a disrespectful way. You know, you think how our our plumbing systems are set up, how our toilet systems are set up, you know, everything is set up in a way that is almost anti-nature, you know? It, it, um, so I just thought, do you have any comments on that? Two comments. One is that the population of, the number of human beings on the earth is anti-nature. So all this, you have to expect that all the consequences of that, we have to be fed and we have waste that has to be disposed of. It's just a consequence of too many people for um, the nature of the earth. So we've changed the nature of the earth to adapt. And uh, here we are. The second thing is that in a, in, it, when we individuals uh, are trained or are programmed to think about me, 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 I'm the center of the universe and we have to fix the universe so it serves my needs, then that also results in what you've described, that it, we don't seem that respectful to nature. And why would we, re, why would we be respectful to nature? I heard, uh, I had some friends in Toronto who were Orthodox Jews and their interpretation of um, the genesis, the part you referred to earlier, Brent, where the casting out of of, of heaven, and uh, and in their interpretation, God gave man dominion over nature. So their interpretation was that all this is fine, no problem. Yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The buffalo don't agree, and the herring don't agree and the carrier pigeons and the, there's ex <laughs> extinctions everywhere but don't worry we're okay <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah uh, Brent do you have any comment um, not at this moment yeah, yeah I just think um, you know and I uh, I don't, I think there are a lot of people that, um, you know, do have respect for water and look at it as an important resource, right, in, the, in a positive way, right? Uh, but uh, in the cities, I think it may be a, a different approach. And, and mm -hmm. you wonder about the whole idea of creating large cities and, and packing a lot of people in one location, right? So... Maybe that's something that should be. Uh, I, I, I think um, we've got away from nature, caught into this industrialized uh, state of being that is separate from nature. But um, a lot of people are waking up, I hope, to that we're not separate from nature. We, we don't have another. This is a closed system. There's nowhere else for us to go. So we we're you know we need to start looking at uh, being a part of nature. We can work with nature, and uh, instead of against it. And I think we could. We may not have any trouble supporting this many people on Earth. We just have to have a different way of looking at it. We certainly have the ways and means to do it. You know, we have uh, advanced technology and mass communication and so uh one way or the other we're probably going to come to that point where we have to uh 
um, either, yeah, uh, uh, start living with within the, you know, the, the nature, the laws of nature, or how nature works, or, yeah, we're going to be the, the extinct species. You are a virus, and we are the <laughs> cure. <laughs> well, George Carlin, I think, said the earth would shake us off like a bad case of fleas. Yeah, the earth. <laughs> yes, he yeah. did. He the did earth, say that. The earth is going to be just fine. Yeah, we're the, yeah. 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 I liked, uh, actually, he's, he's probably one of my favorite uh, comedians, George Carlin. Because, I mean, stuff that he said was so true um he talked about you know how uh environmentalists often you know want their little subdivisions but you know the earth in reality is going to be fine it's going to be fine with or without us really <laughs> he was great sometimes i think that uh what's really going on maybe is that uh, this planet is a DNA experiment of some other civilization that we could barely imagine. And uh, there, the Earth is a test tube. And so it tweaked our DNA in such and such a way, and now it's taking a look at the results and what's happening. And uh, we got greed and a few other things tweaked a little bit too high maybe. Uh, uh, so there's no guarantee that we're going to survive this. It, there's just not really a guarantee. And the forces at work that uh, the greedy forces for money, especially, are are winning the are winning the game right now. And so are we are we going to wake up? You know, and uh, maybe it's going to take a, an event like an asteroid heading for the planet that will be an extinction event for all of us unless we all come together as one people and use all our resources to figure out a way to stop that asteroid from hitting the earth. Maybe it's gonna take something like that for us to wake up. Maybe a little closer to home, all it's gonna take is COVID-20. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've thought for a long time that asteroid's already, uh, it, it, it's right here and uh, I've, I mean, I got into environmental sciences because, uh, you know, I wanted to do something about it. Um, but my biggest concern was pollution, toxins. And, uh, and nobody seems to be talking about how much we're exposed to anymore. You know, it, it's, uh, you know, climate change and, uh, you know, other things, uh, but not how toxic our environment has become and you wonder why our our, uh, our immune systems suck you know we can't shake off some uh, some yeah. little viruses right um so anyway i think we're there the asteroids looming and <laughs> definitely uh, and, it, and, it, and it's we're just uh i know, don't we need I don't to even think we need to we need to clean it up you know, like on so many levels. And it's all, I mean, it's all uh, because of greed, right? We've known how much toxins we're pumping into the environment and the air pollution, water pollution. Uh, we've known that for this for a long, long, long time. And we've had the technologies to clean it up. But it's greed. It supersedes everything. The profit is the thing that's made, uh, yeah. It supersedes all logic. It's like, so I'm sorry, it's going to ruin the economy if you try to put on. I don't even uh, think, I don't even think it's going to be an asteroid. It's going to be infections. It's going to be like people who can't fight off infections because they've just screwed up their body so much. So they can't fight it off. And then there's going to be people who haven't screwed up their body as much. And that's going to be the, the 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 time when you know people supposedly awaken. <laughs> that will be the test. It's not going to be an asteroid. There's no there's there's going to be no asteroid. It's going to be uh, infections, and and that's and and who and who can fight who can fight off the infections. 
and who can't. That's how that's going to roll out. <laughs> I need a tequila. <laughs> uh, Kenny, do you have any uh, final comments? Anything you'd like to say? I was just going to comment on what Kelly said that um, that is what has happened to the uh, Native Canadians when the European, and I guess Americans and South Americans too, when the Europeans brought the Euro diseases to their country, uh, those whose immune systems were weak just died by the millions. And the people who are there now are the survivors. Mm -hmm. So it's happening, baby. It's all around us. I'm gonna, I, I sense a book title here called The Soft Asteroid. <laughs> yeah. COVID-20. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The Quiet Asteroid. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> the quiet is off. It sneaks up on you. The yeah. silencer. The, the inner silencer. asteroid. Oh, yeah, yeah, the inner asteroid. <laughs> asteroid. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, when, I guess when does, we're going to be laughing when, about when this. Do we, when, do, when do we start having fun, Kenny? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've got to bring the tequila next week. <laughs> I'll bring wine. Isaiah, do you have anything you'd like to say? Hi, Lion. Am I? Sorry. No. <laughs> Did but, you have any final comments? Like uh, just final comment after that much negative, I just want to say nothing will be happen to the human. The human is very stronger than any other creator. Dinosaur died, human stay. And don't think about the anything bad happening to humanity. Just that. That's that ah. I, I like that. I think that's a, a good way to go. <clears throat> I, I agree. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. Like Shaya? Uh, well, I don't have much to say, but yeah, I, I think we should liberate our minds. We should think wider and be open to everything because no one knows how we are what we are today. Yeah, if you uh, look at our channel on YouTube, Expanding Your Consciousness, and I can put the link uh, in uh, the Mida, uh, you know, look at some of the stories we've shared because uh, it is very much about that, right? You know, thinking, uh, you know, broader, right? All right. And, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Brent, anything you'd like to say before we go? Uh, I just want to mention uh, we were talking about music earlier and uh, I found some really incredible deep spiritual music that you can use for meditation or whatever. It's incredible. Mm -hmm by a guy named David Parsons, and he's on YouTube. So you can listen to his albums on YouTube. Mm -hmm. David Parsons. David Parsons? David Parsons, yeah. Okay. Okay. Music, because I am looking for music to oh, add. You'll, you'll love it. It's, yeah. it's incredible. Oh, right. Yeah, I, I'm always looking for that because I think it's important for people to be able to, you know, link into things like that for meditation or just when I'm doing art, work as well when I'm painting I like to listen to things like that. One of his best albums is Yatra, Y A T R A. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's, um, that's great. Excellent. Thank you. And thank you, Kenny, uh, for your essay. And I will put the link to your website so people can read your other essays as well as the consciousness of water. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you everyone. Yeah, thanks, Thank you guys. Good night, and hope to see you next week. Thanks a lot.